optimistic about how we can be this year. Um, it was a great environment yesterday for a five o'clock game to have over 6,000, which is a really tough time. Um, I don't know. I, hopefully, people love the doubleheader. <laughs> I don't think I don't think staff liked it because it's hard because so many moving parts. But um, I think it was fun yesterday. Fun and Mikhail, we both got wins. So really happy for Coach Lloyd and his first win as a head coach, which I saw all the players celebrated and poured water on them. So great feeling. I remember when I got my first win. So many more wins for Tommy, and just proud of everything yesterday. Sure. Uh, so as we're here on Wednesday and it's signing day, um, can you talk about the first two players in your class? Yeah, so um, really, really excited. You know, Maya Najee um, is a player that I had my eye on for so many years. Um, nothing to do with Zeke just being here, but because she's such a great player. Very familiar with her high school. I love her high school coach. So her high school coach is T.T. Starks' mother. I don't know if you guys know that, Tara Starks. And she's a great coach, um, runs a really good program, and Maya's coached really well. Maya is uh, six foot four, versatile. Um, she can score in different ways. She can play inside and outside. Um, so great player, the highest ranked player we've ever had, number nine nationally, number three in her position, um, which I think she's even better than that. She's going to be a media impact player, but more importantly, off the court, she is a phenomenal young woman. So if you guys, people love Sam, so think about you know, um, it's just a different version of her. And I think, um, you know, Maya is really smart. She's a great connector, a really good teammate, a leader. Um, she's coming into Arizona into a medical program. And so a seven year plan to be a doctor. So she's, you know, very good student, all those things. So um, yeah, we're, we're just so happy to have her. I can't wait to coach her. And then Kaylin Gilbert, um, phenomenal player. I think very underrated also. She can play the one, she can play the two. Um, she can score in different ways. She's strong, a great passer, but she can shoot. And um, she's good off pick and roll. Um, she's a good defender, so she's going to fit our system really well. Another player that can make an immediate impact. Um, she has a strong body, and she's just scratched the surface. She recently just went to IMG Academy, which um, Coach Daly runs an amazing program. So she's going to really excel this year, and which is great preparation for her coming to college. So can't wait. Um, in my opinion, they're two of the best players in the country. Um, but, you know, just off the court, they're phenomenal young women. And so I just, I'm really, really excited for this class. I really, truly am. It's like perfect. When you look at the recruiting class, do you expect to sign one or two more players further down the line? Um, so, well, well, we'll sign another one today, which who I can't talk about, but excited about her. She'll sign later on because she's with the national team. Um, we could sign one more. So I, I'm not actively, I wasn't out pursuing, but um, there's a situation where we could, but not sure. But regardless, um, our class is great. So whether we do or not, we're prepared for next year. And I, I think it just, we don't need a lot of players after that. So if we get three, we have three today, um, we could get a fourth. But with that said, next year we only need a couple spots because um, we have a really full roster with depth. And a lot of things change every year, but um, I think we have a team that's built to be successful for the next three or four years at a, a high level. So I think you'll see us even be better in a couple of years than we are now. So I'm excited for that. And Kaylin, she recruited or she committed fairly early from yeah. across the country. No visit. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, how, how do you, how do you convince a player like that to come? You know. Well, she followed us and watched us, um, and that was before we had all that success. I think just wanted to be a part of it. We had great connections. She's a great kid, like an amazing kid. Um, another relationship that really helped was Trinity was another player from Florida that knows Kaylin and never had been to Arizona. So I think Trinity being here, you know, they were always talking and she was asking her questions and Trinity had an amazing experience. And so I think that that also helped with Kaylin and Kaylin's a baller. She is a, um, a lot of people say they're gym rats, but she is truly a, a gym rat. She works on her game relentlessly and she wants to be good. So I think just saw, seeing what we do, seeing how we develop and wanting to be a part of it, and she's going to be a better college player than high school. So I'm, I'm excited for her, but it, it's hard. During COVID, it was hard. So that's why I told you guys before, I really truly feel that after the next year and a half, two years, there's gonna be way more kids in the transfer portal because they're going to places they've never been. But, I don't, but Kaylin's gonna love it here, and she'd love to hear on her visit. Um. 
and I saw the tweet with Don, and I mean, mm -hmm. you guys are all going to be up there. Can you just tell us about your relationship with her? And it, Don's amazing. Um, Don's someone who I look up to, um, someone who I just, I love what she's done. I love the steps from Temple, or actually from being a player at a high level. I was never nearly as good as her, but I loved watching that. Knowing her for many years ago, knowing people that played with her and against her, and then watching her career. So then watching her have success at Temple, Temple, and then going and turning South Carolina into a program that wasn't good, into a national prominent program that can contend for a championship every year. And then having my experience with her at USA Basketball and coaching alongside her and under her was a, an amazing experience. So we talked and she had told me, her and Carolyn Peck had told me about the story about the net. And I was like, that's amazing. And I thought she forgot about it. <laughs> and I never want to say, where's my net, obviously. But I was thinking, oh, I never got that net because it was a great, amazing story. And I wanted that. And so I was happy. When I saw that, I was like, I think I know what this is. But that she even had that on her mind. Here she is getting ready to go for a championship this year with the number one team in the country and then thinking about sending me a net. So, I mean, just, um, just a great person that really cares about um, not herself and her success. She does want to pursue championships, but she cares about our game, and she wants to grow the game, and she wants to pull other women along, and I think that's what's so amazing about her. And then being an Olympic gold medalist as a player and a coach and winning a national champion is just a bonus and a cherry on top. But even like when pursuing her salary, it wasn't about her. I mean, she did it like to help women. So I, I, love, I love that about her. She has a strong voice and um, she's earned the right to have an amazing platform. And her a platform does a lot of good things for our game and women our, and everything. So she's amazing. I was happy I have that. I took pictures of like myself next to it all over. I have it taped right on top of my computer because I see it every day. So she kept her, hers in her car, I believe. But then she, when you see it, you can be it, right, and believe it. And she did that. So I'm, I'm a big proponent of like that, like the visualization and stuff. You mentioned Zeke Naji being here mm -hmm. and then Maya Naji coming here. How much do you think that played a role in terms of seeing her brother at Arizona and the success he had wanting her to come to Arizona? I think it plays a role in not that sense because there were two different coaches and men's and women's basketball, but in the sense that Zeke loved it here. And, um, and if their family is amazing. Their family is extremely well-rounded, extremely smart. Like They know the fits and they're very involved. So I think um, you know Maya got a chance to come here a lot. And some of it, even like we wouldn't even always see her. Sometimes we were on the road, but she came and, and saw Tucson, saw where her brother lived and how he experienced and loved it. So I think that helped us knowing the city. Because Maya is someone that is, um, it doesn't only think about basketball, winning. It is like the big picture for her. So I guarantee when she comes, she's going to do a lot of stuff in the community to help change things. I mean, she's a selfless person, like a servant attitude mentality. So. I guarantee she's going to have a plan for what she wants to do to help people in Tucson. That's just how she is. And that's why I'm so connected and drawn to her. Besides being an amazing player, that's just an that's like an extra. But she's the total package in every way. Yeah, so this class could end up being, um, a couple weeks ago they said six. Somebody else today I saw had you at five. So you're going to be a top Remember ten. <laughs> Maybe a top five. Uh, recruiting class, what do you think that does for you for the future recruiting classes because this is the high, most highly ranked class that you will have had? Yeah, it's funny because I don't even think about that. Um, but like, I, I think it just helps because so many people are so worried about those things. I don't really follow that, but if you look at the perception and looking outside in and kids are really you know, the ranking that they have, and the, it's important, and I think it just, it's more attractive. Because if you look at, um, you know, for kids nowadays, the photo shoots, all this and that, that's like the most important thing. I don't think we had photo shoots when I was playing. We didn't, actually. Um, so I think that the perception and the attractiveness of the program and who's going there, I think that just more, makes it more desirable, which is the way it is. I was never like that as a player. I didn't care about that stuff. But I think this generation is very different, and it matters. So it's going to only help us recruit, and it's, it just gives you more national exposure. And I think that what else it does is that it puts you in different positions with national media. Because the reality is most national media on the East Coast don't know anything about West Coast basketball. They know nothing. 
Um, and they didn't even know who Ari was until the tournament. So I think that we ha are at a disadvantage all the time. I think because there's so many places close. Like, national media can drive an hour somewhere and touch four different universities. It's not like that here. So um, it just gives us more respect nationally, which we deserve it. And we've done, we've done some good work. We deserve it. But you know, now it's maintaining that. But with these type of classes, you can sustain success. You got to coach them up, and now you got to figure out how things matter. But you get better players because um, I think that every coach looks better and is a better coach with better players. I mean, like, you know, we made the pick and roll look easy, but also Aries is one of the fastest players in the nation. <laughs> Whips through it. I, we can't, I can't teach that. Whip through, you know, four different people, finish on one leg, you know, through contact over 6'5". Like, I can't teach that. We can teach fundamentals, but you need good players to win, and that's the reality. And it makes everything look different. You can run the same set, and it looks a lot different with All-Americans on the floor than it does with, with one All-American. So it'll help the program. You know, the, the other uh, schools that were in the top, besides UConn, of course, were all Pac-12 schools. What do you think that says again to the nation? I mean, last spring you had two Pac-12 mm -hmm. schools vying for the national title, and then you have this. Well, I think last year helped that. I don't think we would have that this year without last year's performance. So. If you look in the Pac-12, it's the best conference in the country. Like, it's not, you can't deny that. It's like facts right now. Um, we have continuous success. We're deep. I think there's one other conference with one more ranked, but in the end, we always do a little bit better. Um, I think the Pac-12 provides um, great things on and off the court. So it's not only basketball. I feel like other conferences, it's more basketball. For us, it's really good basketball. It's really good academics, and it's good cities. And I think that's what separates us. And obviously, I think the West Coast is the best coast. But being in the championship and having two Pac-12 teams and then how we finished in the conference, one and two, we finished in the championship in the country, I think that says a lot. And it may, I think um, Stanford and us were on a national sta stage. I think it helped the Pac-12 with a lot more um, respect. Because a couple of years ago, you also had Sabrina in that super class. So I think people now respect our league more. Um, it's more desirable, and it's just the sexier league right now. And that's why you see more kids. So now you're going to see that more and more. And if we have success again, again this year, which we can, Stanford's going to be very good again. We'll have some other teams, UCLA, Oregon State, Oregon, us. I mean, if we do well in the tournament again, I think you'll continue to see it more. But now it's finally happening. It, before, if you think of the Diana Tarazis, Sue Birds, or especially Diana Tarazi, because being from California, all of those players were going to you know, different conferences and going to UConn. I think keeping some of these kids or bringing them, you know, some kids are just brought from you know, the South or the East Coast to the West Coast, I think that's big. I don't think that happened years ago. So I, I love our conference and we'll continue to make a lot of noise this year. And Louisville, what do you expect from them? <laughs> Uh, Louisville's a really good team, um, coached really well. Um, I think it's going to be a really tough game. You know, it's a, on a, at a neutral site. I would much rather play Louisville here. <laughs> much rather in front of a sold-out crowd. But, um, you know, they're a good team. It's early, though. Um, both of us don't have new players. Um, you know, they, they return most of their core. We have a lot more new players. But we're both so different now than we will be in March. And I look at us now, and I'm like, you know, but it's, a, it's, it's progress, and that's how we were last year. So I think it's going to be a really good game. I think um, we match up really well. And I think it's going to be fun basketball. And that's one of the reasons why I, I normally, a couple of years ago, would have never played such a strong team so early. But it's a good test to see where you're at and, like, what you need to work on. And I think we're at the point now where we're going to play good teams in a non-conference. Remember, I was asked that all the time. I was like, no. But... I'm not afraid of that. It's fun. Um, I think it's some great exposure once again for us. And to be in South Dakota with Don Staley, South Carolina, and South Dakota State, like they're, they're good. And so that's a pretty big marquee matchups early. And I think it's, that's why it's nationally televised and it's a, it's a big tournament. So excited. No problem. You guys are taking charter up there? Yeah, we had, yeah it would have been a lot harder if we couldn't. Because it's more of a disadvantage. So I'm sure Louisville's chartering too. It's, it's a hard place to get to, um, long travel, but it's exciting. So I, I'm excited to see where we're at. Um, I think that we're a good team, and I think we, we're confident. We feel like we can play with anybody, but we're still trying to figure out our identity. It might be different than last year, and I, I don't, I'm not someone who's like, oh, we have to be this way. We're going to be how we're going to be and, and get better. 
So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think the players are really excited, too. So. And, and what's it going to look like? Because, you know, even last night, you played probably everybody played, right? Mm -hmm. Going into this game, are you going to have a more slimmed down we'll rotation to. that probably will, you know, yeah, so like yesterday I wasn't as concerned with, I know there's the net, the margin of victory, all that stuff matters. I don't really care about that stuff. For me, I need to get people experience in different ways, different roles. So that was my um, focal point yesterday. Um, so I think that it will be different. It's not going to be five in, five out, because certain lineups struggled a little bit. Um, but I think that everybody did well and contributed in different ways. But I can't play 15 players and, and win games. Um, but the games I can, I'm going to. So the games that we can and we're dominating and we have a cushion, I'm going to play people because you don't know the point where you're going to need people. And I think we're a team that can go 12, 13 deep. Um, in the past, we never, we didn't have the talent to do that. And we do have the talent this year. Um, you know, play, developing players like Anna Gret, Gisela, Darren, um, the younger players, Nettie, I need to get, develop them because they're the future of the program. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a hard balance because I, do, I wish I could do that every game. And the reality is I can't, but I have to do what's best to help our team win, and that's my job. So, um, y you know, I think it's, it's not realistic to play everybody, especially in a, against number six team in the country. <laughs> country. <laughs> so it'll look different. But I'm excited to see how people fulfill those roles because it's also going to look different now than it will in 10 games because things change and I just have to figure out the best pieces and the best like cohesiveness on the court. And I don't know yet completely. I know our starters, but I don't know like, you know, the next, because it's kind of changing, but it's still evolving. So I'm excited for it. Oh, one more question for Coach Peter. Sure, did, did, has anybody, I know it's just one game and it's very early, but have there been any sort of surprises, you know, that you thought, Wow, I was sort of set with maybe these 10, and then there's a couple extra people, and I'm not quite sure. And then somebody came in and played, has been consistently playing well. And no, because I haven't really set anything yet. I know the starters because they've been in the system, so they, they're doing better. Um, we could have, this team could have eight different starters. But the difference, what I see is the starters that are now, um, they're more comfortable and they know the system. So they're better in the system because they know it. Now, I feel like other people can be just as good, but it's just the process of learning. It's taking more time because they're all coming from completely different systems. So I think what I see is with the starting lineup, the rotations are better because they know they've been doing it for at least a year, you know, and, and longer for even Shane and them. So I think that it's a process, the other one. So fitting the other pieces in the right situation where they can be good, like Maddie yesterday played with the starting group, like different situations like that. Um, it, but I, I haven't had it set because I'm, I'm still trying to see what, what I love and looking at numbers and looking at the chemistry. And, you know, if you notice, I've been playing a little bit of Helena at the one. But she's been awesome. She's been getting five assists, like four steals. Like, she sees the floor and she's really big. And she's a good defender. So I'm not afraid of that. Um, but, like, these games enabled me to try it. Because it's, it's different trying it in practice than it is in a game situation. So... I think, um, you know, Louisville will probably play, they play smaller sometimes, so we'll match up differently. Um, but then it's, you know, I, I like the fact that we have bigs to throw it into. We have shooters now. We have a lot more versatility. So I, I think probably in last game, not yesterday, but the game before, I think Gisela surprised, but I see it every day in practice. So it was fun to see. I wasn't shocked because she does that every day. But I thought Maddie, Taylor, it wasn't her best game yesterday, but I know what Taylor can do. So I think they've all been doing really well. Darren's improved. Um, no one hasn't gotten better. You know, everybody's improved in something in some way um, than last year. And all the, the freshmen are where I thought they'd be. They're all just learning and getting better. You know, I have to get better defensively. But that's probably, I don't mind. We work on that stuff. I mean, look at Kate. Look how much she's improved defensively. Lauren, um, Samaje. So we're, we're not afraid to work, but we have a lot of work to do. But, but really excited. Awesome. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you. Sam, you're, you're ending up on watch lists this, uh, this year. What's it like? I mean, you've always, people who watch Arizona know, mm -hmm. but people outside don't really know how important you are. 
what's it like to get that recognition now? Yeah, um, it's actually really nice. I mean, to finally, I mean, like you said, a lot of Arizona, you're, I'm kind of the player where you have to see me to like know what I can do. I'm not going to score like 30 points a game. So I think the tournament run really helped us and like helped, I guess you could say, up my stock or whatever for the watch list. Um, so just thankful that my teammates were able to like help me get there as well, help us win those games um, just to be rewarded at the end. So it's really nice. But at the end of the day, you know, have to focus what I do on the court and just not worry about the watch list. But it is nice to be recognized. Uh, Coach was saying that she wanted to see the rotation get a little bit stronger defensively. The starting unit, she knows what you guys can do. Where have you seen their progression since the exhibition game to this point, though? Um, yeah, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Last year during this time, we still say like our defense wasn't as good as it was when everyone saw the national championship game. So we try not to focus too much about like the overall end goal of like how we look now because we know we're going to get better over time. But I think just from the two exhibition games and then this game that we had, um, I've seen a lot of improvement. Um, our defense is very complex sometimes, um, knowing where to rotate, knowing what position to be in. So I think the freshmen and transfers are doing a really good job of kind of like morphing in with the system. They're working really hard in practice, asking questions, just making sure they have it down. So you have this big game coming up on Friday against Louisville. Yeah. Your first, uh, I mean, you had a home opener, and that's always a test, mm -hmm. and every game's a test, but this is, you know, a top top 10 team that you're playing. What are your thoughts going into this game, knowing that it's, um, you know, as a, as a team, as a program, you probably haven't played too many out-of-conference teams like this, except mm -hmm. in the tournament now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's, I'm really excited, actually. Um, I mean, Taylor has played Louisville, I think, like twice now in her college career. So she's just been talking to us about them. Um, we have Araya, who's played in the SEC, who's played against some good competition. So it'll be. I'm curious to see how we do as a team, as a unit, as one against a really good team. I think it's going to be a good game. We're both kind of in the same position. We both lost a really good player. And we're still in the top 25, so both teams. So we're still just trying to battle, find our way. So I'm excited and I'm ready for everyone to see how our teams look. When you look at the recruiting class Arizona's bringing in, I know you're not going to be here next season to see those players play, but what does it say about the program from the time you were recruited to now and seeing the growth in that department? Yeah, I mean, I'm very excited. I'm really excited to see where this program's going to go when I'm gone. Um, we have a lot of good kids coming in. I wish I could play with them, but I don't think I'm going to get a sixth year. <laughs> but just really happy to see uh, where we've come. We're kind of, our biggest competitions are like Oregon, the Yukons, the Stanfords, UCLA. We're really grabbing the same kids as them. So I'm really just excited that we can now compete where when it was, when I was here, I was like the top, the first like top 100 kid, which I mean, <laughs> it's whatever. Now we're getting like top 15, top five. So I'm really happy to see where this program has gone. What was it like last night for you to play in front of Ari and not have Ari as your teammate? <laughs> it was a very weird feeling. And then seeing her stand up with the whole crowd until the other team gets their first point is very different seeing her from that side of the court. But I mean, I'm really happy for her. She's doing great things. Um, I feel like we're navigating as a team without her. We're doing our best because we miss her. But at the same time, we're just trying to go back to where we were last year and hopefully accomplish the mission this time. Any more questions for Sam? Thanks, Sam. Thank you.